Well, good morning, afternoon, Vanine, everybody. My name is Michael at Filmboy24, and if you're looking for a very unique, interesting video experience, chock full of laughs and little intrigue and some mystery, well, I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Just just do a you know quick Google search or YouTube search or something. But if you're vaguely interested in what was shot on this particular roll of film about 44 years ago and never processed, you're at the right place. Well, like I said in that really goofy intro, this is a found film episode. So if you're new to my channel, I've got a, kind of an abundance of old rolls of film like this one that were shot years and years and years ago, and I pick them up in old cameras or camera bags or flea markets or a lot of them online at the uh, the big auction site. Uh, and I happened upon this huge, this particular huge batch of Super 8 sound film. Uh, I got 56 rolls of it in total about a year ago or so from a guy on eBay, and his screen name is Cameraman Mike. Now, he gave me a great deal on the film because I think he knew uh, what it means to be able to get this film out there. And maybe, hopefully, one day, like I did about two years ago, we'll find somebody uh, uh, connected to this found film. So he understood what it meant, and he gave me a really good deal. Uh, if you're in the market for some, you know, like a neat little mix of uh, items, check him out. I'll put his name right here. You probably already see it. Uh, anyway, this is a roll of Ektachrome. 160 Type A sound movie film. It does have an edge code on it. I've already processed it. And it does have an edge code on it, which gives us it's a really good idea, according to Kodak's own website, when this particular roll of film was manufactured. Now, it came in this box, and I think I initially thought that they were all, I, 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 basically, they were all open boxes like this. This was not sealed in, a, in a, uh, a foil like they do when you buy them brand new. They were in boxes. About half of the rolls were in boxes, and about half were just loose like this. So what I did is I went ahead and processed all of the loose rolls because I couldn't really do them in order because I don't really know when they expired, the loose rolls. You can get some idea based on the label, but now that we're back to or we're down to all of the ones that were just kind of thrown in these boxes, they have expiration dates or, or process by dates on the side of the box. So I figured I'd go from the oldest to the newest now that we have some idea. Well, I may have been a little misled and, and maybe hopes that these were all put back in the right boxes. I don't think that's the case. This particular roll here was in this box and it says November of 1978 on the side. Well, according to the edge code on this film, this is a triangle which means this particular roll of film was manufactured in 1978. Now, Kodak always gave a roughly a two-year, I don't know what their exact science was, but through my research, about two years from the time that this was manufactured to the time that you really should get it processed by. Well, that wouldn't make a lot of sense since this was manufactured in 78 and it expires in 78. So, wrong box. Anyway, this comes from that uh, cameraman Mike uh, we call it the Cameraman Mike Sound Film Box Set. A fun little goofy name. Uh, I have a playlist with a whole bunch of them that we've done in the past. And we're working through them. We're making our way through it. We're about halfway through, I believe. Maybe a third of the way through. I didn't do the math before I sat down. This is the actual roll. So what I do is I ex extract the film from the settle down from the cartridge. If you're curious how I do that and load it into this UPB1A, I'll put a link to that video I did about a year ago or so on exactly how to do that. But I load it into this tank. This is a processing tank. You can load up to two 50 foot, maximum 50 foot lengths of film at one time, which I actually do quite often now. Uh, and I made this little boom boom little foam doily to kind of give me a little insurance, a little insurance to make sure no light gets in through the top. Yeah, I know I got to kind of carefully take it off and fill it with the chemicals, but uh, I am going to show you a very brief montage. It's about 60 seconds long. It's a little dated. I did it about a year ago. 
Uh, I used uh, PhotoFlow. I use PhotoFlow at the end now and not dish soap, but you can use dish soap. Really all it does is sort of kind of keep the water spots off, a little distilled water. But let me show you that montage. If you don't want to watch it, just forward through it. Here it is. So like I said, I processed, I pulled this film, put it in the tank, and I processed it, and here is my result. Now, as I do with really all of this old Ektachrome found film, or any film that I even shoot, this old Ektachrome 160, I processed it in black and white chemistry, and I do it as a negative. So you can't really project this on a movie projector. Now I do project it on a projector in order to extract the audio out of it, because my scanner, I use the movie stuff retro scan mark one unit doesn't extract audio from the film but i have recently within the last year picked up a movie stuff retro sync unit and what it does is it allows you to run this film through a standard movie projector counts the pulses via the shutter bleep, 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 and it records directly into your computer or via usb and yeah, has a lot of technical jargon anyway it lets you render the audio much the same way that you render the film itself, the images, and it renders it in perfect frame-by-frame frame audio. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I didn't think so. Anyway, it allows you to then put both the audio and the video of your film on top of one another in your, in your non-linear editing software and line it up. All you gotta do is find one spot that lines up, could be a clacker board, could be a mouth moving, and everything else will automatically be in sync. It's made my life so much easier. Anyway, so I did this in HC110B formula. I process it for seven minutes at about 67 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, wash it off, and then fix it for about seven minutes and hang it up to dry, scan it, deliver it to you beautiful people. Beautiful people. So what do we have? The first, I'd say a third of this particular roll of film uh, has audio. The second two-thirds, is that right? Second two-third of the, 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 the two-thirds following the first third has no sound. Now, I, I, I actually wanted to make sure it wasn't my software, so I actually played this in a projector all the way through after I captured all the audio, and, and it's something that the original uh, filmmaker did. I didn't turn on the microphone or something happened. I, I'm not sure, but there's no audio from about a third of the way in on. So keep that in mind. I'll put a little music or something to it, but you may recognize some of this. Some of my uh, cameraman Mike found film uh, followers. You might recognize some of this footage. Here it is. And
So when I said you might recognize a little bit of it, well, let me put a clip right up here to jog your memory. Something I probably need to do more of. Jog your memory, uh, because if you're a loyal cameraman Mike connoisseur, uh, you'll remember that we had that same backdrop, same three kids, same young lady sitting there singing, and they're singing a fun little jolly little song with mother in the background. And I, and I believe that this this particular film here <laughs> is the continuation from the one you just saw up here because I'm uh, pretty sure it ends and then this is where it picks up and then this ends and they take that cartridge and they go elsewhere and they go to the uh, the water park and have fun at the water park. So it wouldn't make any sense that, that this one comes first. They film that, the mother thing, go to the water park, then get back to the mother thing. So anyway, you get what I'm trying to say. I believe this was, you know, round two of that same little uh, little performance they were putting on in front of, probably in parents at a school function or a church function, maybe. At any rate, we suffered the same issues we get with most of this really, really old E160 Type A stuff. Uh, a lot of the desert crack emulsions, and you know what I'm talking about. It's that emulsion reticulation that happens with this really old film. That's why I don't process this non-EM26 film. You can usually tell because it has the blue rectangle on the front. That's why I don't process this stuff in E6, because the emulsion just melts off. It'll look like this. And we don't want that. And we won't stand for that. Because we want results. No, I'm not running for office. If this is the kind of video that you enjoyed, can you do me one very half second favor and just tap that like button for me. Uh, if you feel like I've earned it and you want to see more found film, a lot more from this particular batch and others, I got one from Canada coming up next time, then do me another solid. It takes about that same half a second. Hit the subscribe button. Become part of this beautiful Film Boy family. I mean, if you could see all the beautiful people that watch this channel, you'd be impressed. I guess I probably would be too. Uh, and until the very next time, we have another found film or, or, review camera, or something else zany. <laughs> yep, there it is. There it is. I'll see all of you aforementioned beautiful people on the very next go around.